Hey guys, I'm Vanessa and I'm here to inspire you to live a happy, healthy, as much of a carefree lifestyle as you can whenever you are living with type 1 diabetes, which unfortunately has no cure and it's not easy. And anyone who says it's really easy and that they have perfect blood sugars, they're lying <laughs> because it's not. No matter what you do, you can do all the right things and eat all the right things and follow all of the rules. And unfortunately, you're still gonna have those days where just no matter what you do, makes things go crazy and your blood sugars are off the charts and uh, it's just the unfortunate side of it but you just have to always try to keep going and pushing through and hopefully this inspires you with with my outlook on my diabetes and inspires you to hopefully feel the same and and try and have a good outlook about it so guys let's go let's get started <laughs> We are going to be talking a little bit today about the Dexcom G4 Platinum. And this is a continuous glucose monitor and I am in love with it because it has changed my life for the better in so many ways. It is a little device that transmits to a receiver and gives you your blood sugar every five minutes. So it gives you lots of trends whenever you're going steady, whenever you're slightly going down, whenever you're um, really drastically decreasing, and the same with up, whenever you're starting to rise and whenever you're going, um, you know, your blood sugar is going high really quickly. So it's trying to make you catch those trends before they get too bad. So you can either eat something or give yourself insulin um, before they get too far out of control that it becomes a struggle to get it back down or, or up. I'm gonna be doing a change today on my Dexcom. I have it in my this arm. You can see the little bump sticking up there. And I'm gonna be changing it over to my right arm. So in my opinion, it's pretty close to painless if you do it you know, the right way. Not to say it's not gonna pinch a little bit. We're gonna talk a little bit today about how to insert it and then exactly what it does, how it works. And um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the fun little accessories you can get for it um, from a company that I really love and that I've gotten quite a few things from. One of them is one that I'm using now. Um, with my receiver and then there's a couple other ones over here. This is the case that comes with the Dexcom. Boring. <laughs> and also the clip on it's kind of awkward. Um, maybe it works for some people but for me this just wasn't cutting it. So I found this company called Tally Gear and their website is tallygear.com. T-A-L-L-Y-G-E-A-R.com. All of them come with these little clips on them. Um, many different styles. Um, most of them are made out of like a swimsuit material, so they're really stretchy. Clip it to your belt loop or your pocket. And what I usually do is I clip it to the back to my belt loop and then slide it in my back pocket. She also sends them with a lanyard, so if you'd rather wear it around your neck, you can do that. One thing I wanna just mention about the Dexcom um, while we start our review about it that some people don't like is the fact that it is something that you have to carry around with you. It's another piece of something, especially people who are already on pumps who don't wanna have an extra thing to carry around. That was kind of my big thing in the beginning when I was on the Medtronic pump and I had their CGM, our continuous glucose monitor. Um, it was all in one, which was really, really nice. I never had the new Medtronic and light system. I had the old Revel that was the first model of the continuous glucose monitor. To be honest, I didn't have a lot of luck with that one. I hear that their new one is better. And I now have the T-Slim pump, which I hear is integrating the Dexcom into it eventually, but there's really no date or known 100% that that's gonna happen and when. So when that happens, if it does, that would be awesome because what that means is just like the Medtronic and light system, right here on the pump, you would see what the receiver shows. So you wouldn't have to carry these two separate things. It would all be all in one. You would still have the transmitter that would send it to the pump, but you wouldn't have to have the receiver as a second thing to carry. Going back to what I was saying earlier, that was one thing that really kind of turned me away from the Dexcom in the beginning. I was like, I already have an insulin pump attached to me 24 seven. I don't wanna have another thing just hanging on me all the time. And this has a 20 foot radius as to how far it can pick up. Some people find like kind of a common area if they're hanging out in the living room, they sit it in one area do their thing, keep looking at it every now and then, or wait till it alarms and then look at it. I always just clip it onto my, my waistband of whatever I'm wearing, just like that. Not a big deal, just hangs there. I usually have it right next to my pump, so they're just kind of there together, hanging out, they're friends. 
<laughs> so inside here in my little case, this is the actual receiver for the Dexcom. And I got the pink one, of course, because I love pink, but they do come in a couple different colors. And please don't judge me, my blood sugar was a little high earlier. That's the joys of being a type one diabetic, as a lot of you know. Sometimes you just eat the wrong things. And today for lunch, I made some bad choices. And uh, there we go, up in the 300s for a little while. So you can look at the last three hours, you can look at the last one hour, and then it goes from there. You can actually go all the way back to quite a uh, nice overview of your day here. And this is showing me what my day has been like few times I spiked a little bit, but I haven't had any lows. And that was a big problem for me were lows. And that's one of the main reasons I got the Dexcom was to try and prevent myself from going too low. I was always in the 50s and not feeling it. So you can set your parameters to whatever you feel like. So we all know that as a type one diabetic, not everybody feels low at the same thing. Not everybody um, considers when they're high, when their blood sugar is high to be um, the same level. So that is the receiver. This is what you're gonna be carrying with you. Hopefully, either in this boring black case that comes with it, if this is your thing, <laughs> or one of these fun cases from a place like Tally Gear. With all the different fun designs you can get. I have a thing for anchors, don't know why. As you can tell, even my uh, diabetic tattoo is an anchor with snakes on it. Just have a thing for anchors. Must have been a sailor in my last life. <laughs> So we're gonna go ahead and do a Dexcom change and I'm going to do an arm insertion, which is something that freaks some people out. And I'm gonna show you one of the easiest ways I know of to do a one person arm change so that you don't need somebody else to do it for you. Because to me, um, having someone else do it for you would be a little more freaky than doing it yourself. Unless you're a kid, then I can see maybe your parents doing it for you. But no offense to my husband, but wouldn't trust him to uh, insert my Dexcom. <laughs> I'd rather just do it myself. <laughs> okay, so this hot mess I have over here, which is just dangling there, that is the sensor and the transmitter. This has been in my arm for about two weeks. This is technically only supposed to be in for seven days, but you'll find as you do research on this that a lot of people keep it in for longer than seven days and still have just as good accuracy as they did in the first seven days and sometimes even better um, whenever you use it longer. I don't think Dexcom would uh, say that that's something that they agree with doing, but from what I've found and what I've been kind of trying out, it's worked really well for me and you'll find for a lot of others as well. So whenever I had it in for two weeks, I used Tagaderm to hold it on so it does stay on longer because this tape that's on here, while it's pretty good, once you get to around the seven day mark, it's starting to peel up and it's ready to come off. So if you use Tegaderm or some people use um, other, like something called rock tape, all these different types of breathable tapes and things that you can put on, try out what works best for you if you wanna try and keep it on longer or even if you just want reinforcement for the seven days. This is not, you know, injecting anything. It's not like an insulin pump that's giving you insulin. So really there's nothing there that's going to cause uh, irritation or infection or anything like that. <laughs> Looks so sexy, I know. <laughs> so here is the new one, all prepackaged, and this is all self-contained with its own inserter. Um, you don't need to load it into an insertion device to put in. Everything that you need to put this in is all right here. I'm gonna use my IV prep to get my arm or, or belly sight or whatever. Um, some people use their thigh. This gets your sight ready and kind of gets your skin prepared and, and ready to take the injection and helps kind of keep the tape adhered better too. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean off my arm. And while that's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this one out. And I'm basically just gonna pull the whole thing right off. Some people get really freaked out about pulling off the tape, it hurts them. They make things you can use to help get the tape off so it doesn't uh, bother your skin so bad. But mine uh, doesn't bother me, so I just pull it right off. See, it's almost like a little fish bone, so tiny. Really flexible, really not even sharp if you kind of touch it like that. So most of this is garbage, but what you definitely don't want to throw away is your transmitter, which is right there that says Dexcom G4 on it. We wanna keep that because that's what we need. <laughs> because this is the transmitter. This goes under the skin and senses what your blood sugar is. The transmitter that's attached sends it to the receiver and then shows you right there. I'm now at 157. Pretty awesome stuff. 
It's really great to know that all these things exist in this day and age because I can tell you even, you know, when I was diagnosed with diabetes, which was in the year 2000. Sorry, here's one of my doggies. She wants to come say hello. <laughs> this is Phoenix, everyone. <laughs> She's being a little baby and she wants her mommy. So even when I was diagnosed in the year 2000, we didn't have anything like this. So uh, this is pretty awesome that we have this kind of stuff now. And you think back in the day, I mean, there was a time when diabetes really was a, a death sentence, unfortunately, because people, I mean, they didn't even have kids to check their blood sugar. They were peeing on sticks or they had one syringe that they were kind of like boiling. It was like a glass syringe and they were giving themselves insulin and just guessing what their, if they had sugar in their urine and they gave themselves insulin. I mean, can you imagine? If we're gonna have to deal with this kind of stuff, it's good that we at least have all these cool things that help us live as normal of a life as we can. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. You can either pry this out by popping these tabs with your fingernails, but I always end up breaking my nails if I do it that way. This right here is a lock to keep this from going off prematurely, and it's also something that can be used to take off the transmitter to put it on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be taking the paper off of the tape, and we're gonna actually just stick it on our arm, and you're gonna have this big thing hanging off of there, but don't be scared. I promise you it's gonna be okay. <laughs> just let it hang there, and we're gonna do step by step. Once the tape's on, you know, this, there's no needle right there. It's not like anything's gonna poke you accidentally or anything, as long as you have this lock on and you kind of do things in the proper order. Okay, so I'm dry, I'm ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on right like that. Press down the tape all around so it's on there. And again, we still do have our lock on there. So we're not accidentally gonna inject it prematurely or anything. So this is where the one-handed by yourself thing goes. And I'm a right-handed person. So the fact that I'm showing you this with my left hand is gonna show you exactly how easy this is, especially when you're doing it with your dominant hand as the one that's guiding it. So when you're doing a um, one-handed by yourself arm site injection, it's not as easy as if you're doing it on your belly where you can pinch up your subcutaneous tissue and then do everything with the other hand. You gotta try and find a way to do this where you can have your arm pinched up, either a doorway or if you're in a chair like this, you can pull down on your arm so that you have kind of just that tissue pulled up and the, the fatty part of your arm is all ready to go to take the injection. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take the locking device out. All right, now how the Dexcom goes in is this white thing at the top you press down on and then the collar here pulls back to retract the needle. So here we go, we're going to start by pushing down on this. All right, the needle's in, really didn't feel anything. And without letting up off of that, we're gonna come down and we're gonna pull back on this, okay? And then we're going to take this and pinch and it's out, once again. Needle's all inside, self-contained. This is garbage. You can throw it right in the trash. The needle is all pulled up inside and completely enclosed. So there's no chance it's gonna poke anybody accidentally. So as I was saying earlier, we have this device now that can pop this off. And how we do that is we take it, we push down here, and it's out. Basically just kind of pops the tabs out for you so that this can pop right out. And we're going to just clean the transmitter with an alcohol swab because it has these little metal contacts which connects then into the new sensor. I wanna make sure it's nice and clean. So we're gonna rub that off. What you would be doing with your Tegaderm to get it ready to go over top of the tape is I always take the old one, just kind of bend back all this yucky stuff I take the old one and I take that plastic piece and I lay it down on the Tegaderm and then I trace around it with a pen. So then I know what size hole to cut out that I can put then over top of this when it's all put together. So this is dry and this is very simple as well. What you do to put this in is put that in like that, put that down and then there's a little lock here here are two snaps and that's in. And then this just kind of twists right out. 
We now have our new Dexcom sensor and transmitter set up and ready to go. We're gonna come into the receiver and we're going to go to start sensor. There is a two hour warm up period, which can kill you because when you're used to having this thing, you love it so much and you just become obsessed with watching. <laughs> Sometimes it's not gonna be exact. Some people get all bent out of shape whenever like this says 110 and your finger stick says 105. People, seriously, let's, let's uh, realize here that one or the other is gonna be off, you know, at any given time. Even your finger sticks, that's not always going to be your exact blood sugar. So know that they're gonna be off by a little bit. Now what you have to worry about is sometimes whenever they're really off, and there's usually an explanation for that. So if this is telling you your blood sugar is 300 and you check it and it's 150, there's probably a reason for that. And that could be that the last time you uh, correlated it, that it wasn't at a time whenever it was running pretty steady. Maybe you had just eaten. Um, maybe uh, your blood sugar was dropping, rising rapidly at the time you checked it and it just couldn't keep up. Um, lots of different reasons why that happens, but don't get too frustrated with it. Know that it is technology and there are gonna be some little bumps in the road every now and then. Um, you know, if it's off by a major amount, I would always recommend making sure your fingers are definitely clean, wash your hands, use a um, alcohol swab, whatever, and just double check one more time before you enter it in here. Because then that's gonna try and match up to what your finger stick is. It's gonna make this uh, correlate to that. So then this could be off again the next time if it was a problem with your finger stick. With this, you still do have to check your blood sugar every 12 hours. You don't have to be doing the six, eight, 12 times a day like you might've been doing before you had something like this. Um, never trust that this is what you should go by whenever you're giving yourself insulin because if this tells you 300 and then you correct for a 300, you might wanna just double check, better be safe than sorry, um, before you go ahead and give yourself a big dose of insulin for something like that. Um, I would say to always check your sugar. If, you're, if you are showing high on your Dexcom, check your sugar just to make sure, then give your insulin. Make sure that you are in fact high. Otherwise you can get away with just two times a day, which is a pretty sweet deal. Save your little fingertips. <laughs> All right guys, well I think that is uh, pretty much my review of the Dexcom. If we're gonna be stuck with something like what we have, it's at least awesome to know that we have these cool types of gadgets that really help make life a lot easier, help us keep better track of things, help us follow the trends of high and uh, low blood sugars, try and correct before it becomes too much of a problem. A lot of doctors will let you try it for a week or a couple days or whatever, just to see if it is in fact something that you'd be into. But it is truly an awesome thing and it's helped me and many other people lower our hemoglobin A1Cs and what's not to love about that. <laughs> all right guys, so don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you catch all of my future videos. Not all of them are gonna be diabetes related, but they're all meant, no matter what the topic, to inspire you in some way. Thank you guys so much. Take care, bye.